Welcome back to Dealing Together. First caller? I bought three sweaters to get the fourth free. Oh, you got fleeced. Next caller? I traded my old Samsung at AT&T for a new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and chose my plan. That's not a bad deal. It is not. Our best smartphone deals. Your choice of plan. Learn how to get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with Galaxy AI on us with eligible trade-in. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Offers vary by device. Subject to change. S24 plus 256 gigabyte offer available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. See att.com slash Samsung for details. She was a young woman with a bright future. She was just trying to find her way. She was always aiming for higher heights. She wanted to move to Atlanta to go to college. But she would never get the chance. The caller advised that he had found her unresponsive. Now I'm wondering what this thing. It's my friend. I don't think she's breathing. Medical units transported her to the hospital, but they could never revive her. I just still crying, crying, crying. I couldn't even stop. Did she have some kind of a medical issue? Perhaps she had overdosed on drugs. Or was the truth far, far worse? Injuries of this nature are not going to show up till hours, possibly a day or so after the incident. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I thought we would never get the whole truth about, you know, what really happened. Ah. June 7, 2014. It's Saturday morning in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a former factory town turned high-tech hub. Chattanooga was built on manufacturing, but as of the last 20, 30 years, it's really transitioned into more of a startup city. Chattanooga has some of the fastest internet speeds in the world, and that has made the city really attractive for small business owners. However, just west of Chattanooga's booming downtown, the residents of College Hill Courts haven't shared in the city's success. It's very, very low-income housing development project that's been around for many decades. We see a lot of drug activity. Unfortunately, I've worked several homicides in the College Hill Courts. A lot of that is either drug or gang-related. And at 6 o'clock that morning, there's yet another 911 call from the courts. It's my friend. I don't think she's breathing. The caller, Jamichael Harris, identifies his friend as 21-year-old Inez Burney. The caller advised that he had found Miss Burney in her bathtub unresponsive. No, she's in the tub. Please send somebody. Will Inez end up just another right. grim statistic? 2014 was when we started seeing more people overdosing on heroin mixed with a little bit of fentanyl. Or was there more to this emergency than meets the eye? Please hurry. I don't know what else to do. Around College Hill Courts, Inez Burney was known for her warm and charitable heart. She was a love, caring, and kind, wholesome-hearted person. She would give you the shirt off of her back if you needed it. She didn't want to see people down or out or nothing like that. And she helped a lot of people in that community. She really did. And at just 21 years old, Inez was determined to be independent. She wanted to make sure that she had a job and that she, you know, could pay her own bills and take care of herself. So that was one of the things that she did. She gonna do what she gotta do. And she was always aiming for higher heights. However, Inez's ambition wasn't the only thing people admired. Guys were very attracted to her. She's very petite. She had a nice shape on her. She was very well dressed. You know, she was a pretty girl. She just had that type of outgoing personality. To know her was to love her. At 19, she'd started dating her first serious boyfriend, 21 year old Clayton Sanders. He was brought up in a nice home, brought up very well. 
He was very polite, very respectful. Well, let me grab the door for you. Thank you. I could tell that he really liked Inez. Inez appeared just as taken with Clayton. He's nice looking, he dressed well, you know. He's a nice person to be around. He was her type and physical appearance, but also in the way that he treated her. But after almost two years with Clayton, the relationship cooled. Inez simply wasn't ready to settle down just yet. She had kind of put things on hold. She was 21 years old. She was enjoying life. Plus, she had big plans for the future. She was looking into going back to school. She was going to Georgia Tech, I think, the one that she applied for. But even as Inez looked to leave Chattanooga behind, someone had suddenly resurfaced in her life. 20-year-old Jamichael Harris. He went to school with her when she was younger, and they had mutual friends. Hey, you look exactly the same. When Jamichael found her online, he really wanted to catch up with her, get to know who she had become as an adult, and that's when the two started hanging out. You look great. He was really a good person. He grew up in the church. He was an overall good kid. They grew up as friends, you know. It wasn't no relationship type or nothing like that involved. But now, four months after reconnecting, Jamichael has just called 911, begging for help. Hello, it's my friend. I don't think she's breathing. He found her in the bathtub and then started trying to revive her. Wake up! Inez! Once medic units arrived, they started their procedures. Got her prepped and ready and took her to Erlanger Hospital. But how had this vibrant young woman ended up in such a dire condition? And what happened? I don't know. She was like this when I got here. She thinks she could have drowned. When the EMTs arrived, they noted that Inez's hair was dry. There's a little bit more to the story. It seemed as if Jamichael was intentionally trying to mislead the police. Welcome back to Dealing Together. First caller? I bought three sweaters to get the fourth free. Oh, you got fleeced. Next caller? I traded my old Samsung at AT&T for a new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and chose my plan. That's not a bad deal. It is not. Our best smartphone deals. Your choice of plan. Learn how to get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with Galaxy AI on us with eligible trade-in. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Offers vary by device. Subject to change. S24 plus 256 gigabyte offer available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. See att.com slash Samsung for details. In June of 2014, 21-year-old Inez Bernie had big plans for her future. She was saying she was going back to school. She was just trying to find her way, and she was doing it. But now, after her friend, Jamichael Harris, found her unconscious in her apartment, Inez's bright future has come to a tragic end. Medic units transported her to the hospital but they could never revive her. She was pronounced dead. With no apparent cause of death, officers at the scene alert homicide detectives. When you have a young woman in her 20s that passes away and we don't have a cause, they're gonna contact us and we're gonna get involved. On their way to the crime scene, detectives contact the hospital and speak with the attending physician who pronounced Inez deceased. I first spoke with the doctors, and they didn't see any real injuries that stood out. And there was no trauma of, of any sort. The initial ruling generally is the unknown death until we can have the medical examiner do an autopsy. However, given where Inez was found, detectives aren't ready to rule out foul play. The College Hill Court apartments where Inez lived had a reputation for crime and gangs. But as detectives work their way inside, they find no evidence that a crime has occurred. There were no signs of forced entry. The living room 
It's basic living room. Nothing turned over, no signs of a struggle. Her purse, her phone, everything was still in place. However, that still leaves detectives with several options. A scene such as this, there's always questions of could this possibly be an overdose or could this be a medical issue? An overdose wouldn't be unheard of in the courts. Maybe she had been out all night and she had taken some narcotics. We just didn't know. But there may be someone who does. Inez's friend, Jamichael Harris. He's the gentleman that found Miss Bernie. So I wanted to get his statement. Jamichael's initial statement to responding officers had seemed more than a little suspicious. He said he doesn't know if she had done anything, so he comes up with the drowning in the bathtub scenario. But when the EMTs arrived, they noted that Inez's hair was dry, and so they were able to rule out a possible drowning. I'll tell you one thing, she didn't drown. At that point, it makes you suspicious, but you have to kind of start backpedaling. So I have a patrol officer take Mr. Harris to our interview room at the police services center. This interview is with Mr. Uh, Jamichael Harris. The time is uh, 9.45 hours in the morning. This is on the DOA undetermined of Ms. Inez Bernie. Jamichael begins by explaining that he'd recently reconnected with Inez after many years. So y'all childhood friends? Uh -huh. They were friends in school. They had reconnected through Facebook. Jamichael tells detectives he'd met up with Inez at around 1 o'clock the previous afternoon. Jamichael told them that he had spent the entire prior day hanging out with Inez. What'd y'all do during the day? We were just walking around. They visited a friend's house. They also went to a local convenience store. And ultimately, they ended up at Inez's sister's home. What'd y'all do at her sister's house? Just look at TV. Okay. Y'all watch TV. Mm -hmm. Jamichael says that after spending the evening at Inez's sister's, they'd left around 2 a.m. and headed back to Inez's apartment. It was too late for him to go home, so he would just stay at her apartment. Since it was late, I guess. Yeah. But Jamichael also says that once back at the apartment, he was still restless. And you're welcome to stay if you want to. I really appreciate that. Do you mind if I go out and come back in a little bit? Thanks so much. She told him, uh, that's fine. I'll leave you a key outside. What did you do once you went outside? I just thought, well, just walk around. What did she tell you what she was going to be doing? She Ooh. said she's figured to go to bed. OK. According to Jamichael, he was gone for more than an hour. Did you go anywhere? I went down the street, like, going towards uh, downtown. But he says that when he got back, there was no key outside and no need for one either. When he arrived back at the apartment, the door was unlocked. That raised an immediate red flag for detectives. Maybe someone saw Inez put the key outside for Jamichael and then used the key to enter her apartment. That tells me that there didn't need to be sign of forced entry. Did you find her automatically? And I was going to use the bathroom. That's when I seen it. He finds Miss Bernie not submerged in the water, but her head above the water. Come on. I tried to throw a little water on the stick she wake up. Nanez didn't respond, so he called 911. Did it appear like she had gotten sick or thrown up? I asked him about any possible narcotic activity or or if they had been drinking or anything of that nature. Uh, she, didn't do, she didn't do nothing. Didn't do nothing like that? OK. Although Jamichael admits he can't be entirely sure. She could have when I was out, when I had one like I said. All right, so you don't know. He was unable to tell me if there was anything in her system that we needed to be looking for. Do you know if she had any kind of medical conditions or anything that, that we possibly need to look for? I don't know. Finally, detectives ask about the depth of Inez and Jamichael's friendship. When y'all originally got back together, you know, met up to, to catch up, was there the possibility of y'all possibly starting a relationship? No. Uh -huh. 
They were just on a friend level. It wasn't nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so there was no like, uh -huh. hey, you know, this might be a, a midnight booty call or anything <laughs> like that. Uh -huh. Then, at the end of the interview, detectives asked Jamichael for a DNA sample. Are you cool with that? Yeah. If they were able to recover any DNA from the crime scene, the sample from Jamichael could rule him out. Before they can cross-reference his DNA to samples from the crime scene, detectives do a quick search of Jamichael's background, and there's nothing to suggest he's anything more than a witness. The guy had never been in trouble before, never had a speeding ticket or anything. Once they're done with Jamichael, detectives move on to the grim task of informing Inez's family of her death. It was really a heartbreaker. It was a shocker to all of us. What? I just couldn't put the two and two together, you know, that she really was dead. Inez's mother does know one thing, though. Her daughter's death wasn't an overdose. Miss Bernie said she's not had any kind of narcotic history. Inez didn't drink, she didn't smoke, she didn't like drugs. Are you aware of Inez having any medical conditions that maybe would have caused her death? No, none. However, Inez's mother believes she might know the reason behind her daughter's murder. I knew this would happen. Her mother immediately suspects foul play. It's the money. It's got to be the money. Money. What money? Welcome back to Dealing Together. First caller? I bought three sweaters to get the fourth free. Oh, you got fleeced. Next caller? I traded my old Samsung at AT&T for a new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and chose my plan. That's not a bad deal. It is not. Our best smartphone deals. Your choice of plan. Learn how to get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with Galaxy AI on us with eligible trade-in. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Offers vary by device. Subject to change. S24 plus 256 gigabyte offer available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. See att.com slash Samsung for details. <laughs> Chattanooga detectives have just informed Inez Bernie's mother about the death of her 21-year-old daughter. All kind of thought was running through my mind. Who did and why? She didn't have any enemies because she had such an outgoing personality. She was friends with everybody. However, Inez's mother does think she might know the motive behind her daughter's death. It's the money. It's got to be the money. Money. What money? Inez's mother tells the police that a few days prior to her death, she was flashing tons of money on social media. The picture itself was strictly of just extensive amount of money. Inez's mother believes that the money was from her tax returns. I told her not to post pictures like that on social media. I told her it's not safe. The area she was living in, it wasn't the best neighborhood in Chattanooga. Her mom was worried that this might have led somebody to harm Miss Bernie and steal her money. I asked the detective, but they never found any money in the house. We have this social media post, and we have not located this money. So that also tells us this could possibly have been a robbery. But if Inez had been robbed, was it a neighbor? Or was the culprit lurking somewhere on her friends list? At this point, we start looking into doing search warrants and subpoenas for phone records and for social media records to see if we can get dates and times and figure out a window of who all has made contact with her via social media or phone call or text from the point the post had actually been made. Detectives then return to College Hill Courts and start knocking on doors. We try to talk to anybody that might have been outside or anybody that might have heard anything to see if we can locate somebody that might have been in the area to commit this robbery. Neighbors didn't hear anything out of the ordinary, but one of them did note that they saw a gentleman enter Inez's apartment that night. About what time was that? I want to say it was late, like 3, 3.30 in the morning. That would have been while Jamichael said he was out walking around. Is this the guy you saw? I don't think so. 
but it was across the court, so I can't be sure. When they were shown a picture of Jamichael, they didn't recognize him. Thank you for your time. But if it wasn't Jamichael, who did the neighbors see? Just a few hours later, detectives get a promising new lead. Homicide. Police learn that someone was arrested in the same neighborhood the night that Inez was murdered. I was notified by our robbery division that a gentleman had been picked up that had committed a robbery in the College Hill courts that night. The suspect's name is A.J. Phillips. It was easy for detectives to track down A.J. He had just been arrested for robbing another College Hill courts resident at gunpoint. He was currently sitting in jail. Now detectives wonder if A.J. could have something to do with Inez's death. After the family had told us that they felt like it might have been a robbery for the money, I had to interview him. I had to find out what his whereabouts were. Because the case is about to take on a new urgency. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's plumbing. The Hamilton County Medical Examiner had just completed the autopsy. So nothing in the talk screen? She didn't have no drug in her system, which I knew they wouldn't because she didn't take drugs. Inez's death wasn't an overdose, but it wasn't an unknown medical issue either. The medical examiner advised me that it was definitely um, going to be a homicide. Someone had actually murdered her. The medical examiner was able to determine that Inez had injuries consistent with blunt force trauma to her head. The evidence also indicated that she had been strangled. How did the EMTs miss that? He advised me that blunt force injuries of the head were not visible, probably due to the hairline. And when doctors saw her at the hospital, injuries of this nature are not going to show up till hours, possibly a day or so after the incident. Sometimes it takes a while for the telltale bruising to form. Thank you. Detectives now hope the autopsy will lead them to their killer. They swabbed under her fingernails and took samples of that for testing. Potential DNA. If there's DNA there, it could potentially lead to a match and a murderer. Welcome back to Dealing Together. First caller? I bought three sweaters to get the fourth free. Oh, you got fleeced. Next caller? I traded my old Samsung at AT&T for a new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and chose my plan. That's not a bad deal. It is not. Our best smartphone deals. Your choice of plan. Learn how to get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with Galaxy AI on us with eligible trade-in. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Offers vary by device. Subject to change. S24 plus 256 gigabyte offer available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. See att.com slash Samsung for details. Thirty-six hours after Jamichael Harris called 911 and reported finding Inez Burney unconscious in her bathtub, detectives are now investigating the case as a homicide. The Hamilton County Medical Examiner had just completed the autopsy, and he advised me that Miss Burney had all the indicators of strangulation as cause of death. The detectives may also have a suspect. A.J. Phillips was arrested in the same community the same night that Inez was murdered and charged with robbery of a nearby apartment. I had to speak with his lawyer and with him to get an interview, uh, which he was willing to do. And like I told the other cops, I ain't robbed nobody. He didn't really want to admit to committing the robbery. OK, what about Inez Burney? Who? She was killed last night in the courts. You don't have to answer that. I don't know what y'all talking about. You were picked up there, right? He denies knowing Inez or having anything to do with her death. He did not want to be wrapped up with, with a homicide. So you didn't take her money? And what money? She had a stash in her apartment. More than two grand's gone missing. I mean, that wasn't me. When the detectives dig a little deeper, it appears that A.J. is telling the truth. The police were able to clear A.J. of Inez's murder when they realized that at the time of A.J.'s arrest, Inez was still alive. 
He was actually arrested a couple hours prior to, to Miss Bernie being killed. Homicide. However, just as it appears the investigation has stalled, a woman named Shaniqua Smith contacts detectives and says she has urgent information. She told detectives that she had been in touch with Inez shortly before the murder. When Shaniqua comes in to give a statement, she also tells detectives that she'd seen both Inez and Jamichael on the day of the murder. I actually gave Jamichael a ride. Shaniqua told police that she had taken Jamichael to Inez's that afternoon. When was that? Early afternoon, 12.30 or so. When's the last time you spoke to Inez? She texted me around 2 o'clock in the morning. Inez asked her if she could come back and pick Jamichael up. Why would she want you to do that? Well, the message said that she had a guy coming over and Jamichael didn't have a ride home. Miss Bernie is not going to be able to spend time with this gentleman if Mr. Harris is there. Shaniqua told detectives that she was asleep when the text came through, so she didn't read it until the next morning. By then, Inez was already dead. Did Inez say who was coming to see her? No, but it was probably Clayton. Shaniqua explained that Clayton was the guy that Inez had been seeing on and off for the past couple of years. They were pretty serious at a point, but Inez wanted things to be more casual since she's going down to Atlanta for school. And Clayton was OK with that, as far as I know. But now detectives wondered just how casual Clayton was about his relationship with Inez. Could Clayton have gotten jealous once he learned that Inez was hanging out with Jamichael? Do you think Clayton knew that Inez was spending time with Jamichael? I think so. I think he suspected them of being more than friends? I really don't know. However, information about Clayton isn't all that Shaniqua has for detectives. She said, I went to the apartment after y'all released the scene and I found the bed sheets in the washer, and I found some clothes in the washer with the bed sheets that I think she was possibly wearing the night she died. OK, are they still in the washer? No, I have them. She said, the minute I found them in the washer, I, I knew this was important, so she collected them and kept them. Well, we're going to need those sheets for the investigation. I kind of figured. Let's go. We went and collected those items, and we were able to process those, and we located several DNA profiles. Hoping for a quick match, detectives compare the profiles to the DNA sample they took from Jamichael. Parties that have been arrested for felonies, it's mandatory that their DNA is collected. Unfortunately, it was not a match. So now detectives needed to check and see if any of the profiles were in the national database. Detectives get a hit. One of the DNA profiles matches Clayton Sanders. It turned out Inez's ex-boyfriend was also an ex-con. At some point, Clayton got into some trouble, and he was arrested and locked up. Clayton went to jail for drug charges and aggravated assault. Detectives already knew that Inez was trying to meet up with someone the night that she died. And now they had this DNA match on the sheets to Clayton her ex. It was just a matter of time before they connected all the dots. Welcome back to Dealing Together. First caller? I bought three sweaters to get the fourth free. Oh, you got fleeced. Next caller? I traded my old Samsung at AT&T for a new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and chose my plan. That's not a bad deal. It is not. Our best smartphone deals. Your choice of plan. Learn how to get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with Galaxy AI on us with eligible trade-in. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Offers vary by device. Subject to change. S24 plus 256 gigabyte offer available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. See att.com slash Samsung for details. <laughs> Detectives investigating Inez Bernie's murder have just matched a suspicious DNA profile from the 21-year-old Sheets to her ex, Clayton Sanders. Shaniqua had told police that Inez was inviting a guy over to her place the night she died and that she was pretty sure it was Clayton. According to Shaniqua, the relationship between Inez and Clayton was strictly casual. However, detectives are left wondering if Clayton believed the same thing. Maybe Clayton had spotted Jamichael Harris leaving Inez's apartment the night of the murder. 
he might have not liked the fact that she spent all day with Mr. Harris. When police bring in Clayton for questioning, he appears quite distraught over Inez's death. Can't believe this happened. I, I, I really love that girl. However, detectives waste no time confronting Clayton about their suspicions. Do you know that Inez was seeing other men? We weren't really exclusive. Was that a problem? Wasn't that I could really do about it. Clayton said he wasn't thrilled about the casual nature of their relationship, but he accepted it if that was the only way he could keep seeing Inez. OK, did you know a guy named Jamichael Harris? She, she might have mentioned him. Detectives can't help but notice that Clayton's a little evasive about Jamichael. Did you see him the night Inez was killed? How would I did that? We were told that Inez was expecting you to come over. Yeah, we talked about it, but no. He said he was supposed to have been coming over and didn't. He got hung up. I think he couldn't get a ride. OK, so where were you then that night? I was at home. Can anyone verify that for you? No. Clayton didn't have any witnesses to corroborate his story. Detectives remain suspicious, but they don't have enough to hold him. Clayton's DNA on Inez's sheets wasn't enough. It proved that he had been in the apartment, but detectives couldn't pinpoint that he had been there on the night of the murder. Hoping to get a better sense of Clayton's movements that night, detectives subpoena his phone records. They also ask Inez's sister, Jackie, to come in and give them a statement. Her and Jackie had a real tight bond because they lived close by. They lived in the same neighborhood. She was always up at her sister's house. She would be up there every day, all night. They hung out a lot. In fact, Inez and Jamichael had spent several hours at Jackie's house just prior to the murder. Thank you for coming in. We got to find who killed my sister. She meant everything to me. During the interview, Jackie confirms that Inez and Jermichael spent most of the evening at her apartment. They didn't really do much, just sat around and watched TV. When I spoke with her sister, it really kind of shed some light on Miss Bernie's last hours. I think she was hoping he'd get bored. He? Jermichael? Yeah. The sister told me that she had a, a male friend coming over, so she was trying to get rid of Mr. Harris. This, of course, fit with what detectives had already heard from Shaniqua and Clayton. But Inez's sister is about to add a new detail, one that shifts the focus of their investigation. Well, it wasn't just that she was expecting Clayton. Inez was getting pretty tired of Jamichael, like the way he was always coming around. She tells them that Inez and Jamichael were not getting along. According to Jackie, Things had started out well enough when Inez and Jamichael reconnected a few months earlier. You look great. They would just spend time together. Well, you know, it was fun. He was just a friend, you know, just somebody that would come around, you know, just to be around. Except the more Jamichael kept coming around, Inez began to suspect that he was looking for more than a friendship. He was always trying to impress her or trying to show that he wanted to be with her, taking her out to eat. He'd buy her things if she wanted it. Based on all the gifts and affection and attention, it seemed that he wanted a relationship with her. Jackie says that Inez didn't intend to string Jamichael along. She didn't find him to be somebody that she was attracted to in that way. He was just a friend, you know, just one her type. But Jackie isn't sure Jamichael really got the message. He still wanted to be around her. He was obsessed with her. You think something happened? Well, Inez did call me that night after they got to her place. Like Shaniqua, Jackie told police that Inez called looking for someone to give Jamichael a ride home. But in Jackie's version of the story, Jamichael was refusing to leave. Yeah, girl, he's sitting on the couch. You told him to go, right? Oh, yeah. Inez was angry with Jamichael because she made it very clear that she wanted him to leave, and he was refusing to do so. She wanted him gone. I guess I'm just going to have to throw him out. Do you want me to come over? No, I got this. 
But by morning, Inez would be dead. If he's got feelings for her and he's trying to act on those feelings and she's not returning those advances, then that's a motive. What about the money, though? What money? Your mom told us of some cash Inez had uh, taken a picture of on social media. Oh, that's long gone. Jacqueline told the police that the picture with the money that Inez had posted was an old picture, and she didn't know why Inez had suddenly posted it. She confirmed that the money was no longer at the house. There's no real need to completely rule it out, but I can stop concentrating very seriously on the robbery. I need to really concentrate on possible jilted lovers. But does that mean Jim Michael is their killer? He was someone who was friends with her. I couldn't believe it. First interview with Mr. Harris was, and uh, Mr. Harris was my key witness. Unfortunately, today he is now my key suspect. Welcome back to Dealing Together. First caller? I bought three sweaters to get the fourth free. Oh, you got fleeced. Next caller? I traded my old Samsung at AT&T for a new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and chose my plan. That's not a bad deal. It is not. Our best smartphone deals. Your choice of plan. Learn how to get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with Galaxy AI on us with eligible trade-in. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Offers vary by device. Subject to change. S24 plus 256 gigabyte offer available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. See att.com slash Samsung for details. <laughs> Homicide detectives investigating the death of 21-year-old Inez Burney now believe that 20-year-old Jermichael Harris had a motive to murder his childhood friend. He wanted to be her boyfriend, and she didn't want him. She just wanted him as a friend. He really did like her, but she didn't like him in that way. The evidence points to him getting frustrated with this. He spent money on her. He spent a lot of time trying to get her to return the affections, and she's just not doing it. A compelling motive isn't all that detectives have either. Jamichael was there that night. He called 911, so he definitely had the opportunity to commit this crime. And on June 10th, 2014, the crime lab all but erases any doubt that Jamichael is the killer. We finally got the DNA back, the DNA under fingernails. When the results came back, they learned that the DNA belonged to Jamichael. That's investigative gold. That was pretty much what we needed for a, a good, solid case. Once detectives have the DNA results, they sit down with Jamichael for a second round of questioning. I tried to talk with Mr. Harris for a second time to kind of streamline some of the problems that were found during the investigation, some of the inconsistencies in his story. If you don't want to talk to me, then you, you do have the right to refuse. It's up to you. He didn't want to talk to me. He requested his lawyer, and I had to end the interview. Then detectives booked Jamichael into the Hamilton County Jail on first-degree murder charges. That was ecstatic about the arrest. Nobody want to be living in the neighborhood knowing there's a kill out there. Even with Jamichael refusing to talk, it's not hard for detectives to piece together what happened on the night of the murder. Thank you for making sure I made it home OK. Mind if I stay a while? Uh, it's actually getting late. She started getting frustrated with him. I need you to go. He pretty much overstayed his welcome. I guess I'm just going to have to throw him out. Really, I need you to go. I need a ride, though. I can find you a ride, but I need you to go. I was hoping I could stay tonight. At some point, he probably tried to make a sexual advance towards her. Was she ultimately rejected? Come on, you told me you had fun. No, it's not going to happen to Michael. What? They got into an argument. It's not going to happen. 
he couldn't handle the rejection, and it could have just triggered something in him. Michael, stop. It may have made him go to a place in his mind where he felt he had to kill her. I believe he attacked her. They fought, and her build, she's athletic, but she's small. Mr. Harris is a big man, so he probably slammed her to the ground. And given his weight, when he got on top of her, probably put a lot of his weight on her, cutting off her air, her breathing. It appears that he also banged her head against the floor multiple times. That would cause the head injuries. And then the ultimate strangulation is just him putting all his weight on her chest and her neck. And uh, she lost consciousness and died. Then, once he realized what he'd done, Jamichael tried to cover his tracks. He killed her. And now he had to come up with a story. So he was thinking and pacing around the apartment. He had no idea what to do. He comes up with the drowning in the bathtub scenario. He made a few mistakes, though. Her hair wasn't wet. And because the strangulation occurred before she was placed in the bathtub, there was no water in her lungs. As the case heads for trial, the defense appears willing to fight. When he went for his preliminary, he had people in his corner. His pastor came and spoke on his behalf. Other family members spoke on his behalf. But in the end, Jim Michael's attorneys approach the prosecutors about a possible plea deal, and they present the deal to the family. So I prayed about it, and I thought about it. And so I told him, yeah, I'll be willing to take a plea deal, because I didn't want to go to court. On January 10th, 2017, Jim Michael pleads guilty to second degree murder. In exchange, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. But no punishment will ever bring Inez back. The Bernies have lost a loved one. They're never going to have their sister or their daughter again. He deprived her of ever having a family of her own, me of having grandkids, or her doing something amazing with her life. She didn't get a chance to mature and blossom into the woman that she was destined to be. And her family still struggles to understand why Jim Michael chose to murder someone he supposedly loved. I don't know how he could just take her life the way that he did. If you say, we're just friends, you need to accept that because you can't make anyone care about you or like you or love you. You either be with them or leave or walk away. But the family hopes that Inez's story can prevent others from suffering the same tragic fate. If you have a family member that is in a relationship that they may or may not be uncomfortable with, encourage that person to move away, protect themselves at all costs, because my sister didn't think that this young man was obsessed with her to the point that if he couldn't have her, no one else could. And because of that, my sister's not here anymore.